Never charging 200% sounds smart, right? Well, what if I told you that the habit is quietly hurting some EVs more than it helps? You'll learn why always charge to 80% rule came from old ideas. Why blindly following it can actually damage certain modern packs and exactly when and how you should hit 100% to keep your battery healthy and your range honest. By the end, you'll know what's the myth, what's the fact and the one simple routine that protects your battery better than fear based advices. For years, the internet has shouted the same thing. Never charge 200%, keep your battery between 20 and 80, and your pack will live forever. That advice came from phone battery habits and early EVs with fragile chemistries. It's easy to say and satisfying to follow. It, uh, it's also incomplete, because modern cars are not phones and modern packs aren't one size fits all. Batteries age in two main ways, cycle aging and calendar aging. Cycle aging is using the battery, charging and discharging. Calendar aging is just sitting there, especially at a high state of charge and high temperature. Both matter, but how much each matter depends on the battery chemistry, the vehicle's battery management system, and how you operate the car. LFP batteries, NMC batteries, and other mixes behave differently. LFP loves being shallow cycled uh, and is more tolerant at high cycle counts but it has a very flat voltage curve, which makes it hard for the car's computer to know the exact battery state unless it gets a true full charge from time to time. NMC and higher nickel chemistries have different voltage curves and different sensitivity to high state of charge and heat. That means the 80% forever approach can be helpful for some packs and harmful for others. The surprising harm from never charging to 100%. If you never charge to 100%, you create two problems over time, drift and imbalance. Drift happens because the battery management system needs a reference point to understand the packs at true state. When the cells have no regular full charge reference, the BMS loses accuracy and the displayed range becomes unreliable. You'll see sudden range jumps, unexpected drops, or the car refusing to use available energy even though the battery physically has it. Imbalance happens because no two cells age exactly the same. At high state of charge, tiny differences get exposed. At low status of charge, they can hide. A full charge is how many manufacturers let the battery equalize and the BMS rebalance as cell voltages. Skipping full charges over hundreds of cycles means the small imbalances grow, and eventually the BMS will limit usable capacity to protect the weakest cell. That look like uh, permanent capacity loss even though many cells are fine. Imagine two identical cars driven the same way for a year. Owner A tops up to 100% once a month for a long trip and otherwise charges to 80%. Owner B never goes over 80% and thinks they are saving the battery. After a year, Owner B finds their car suddenly shows 5-10% to less usable range and the car sometimes refuses to take a high charge at the station. Owner A still has steady range and no weird charging behavior. The difference isn't magic, it's cell calibration and balancing working as intended. Charging to 100% all the time is also not the answer. Fast charging to 100% at high temperature is one of the worst things you can do for battery life. The worst habits are repeatedly blasting rapid high power DC into a cold battery without preconditioning, leaving a battery at 100% while it breaks in the hot weather, constantly using maximum charge rates without addressing thermal limits. Modern EVs use thermal preconditioning, tapering, uh, current and smart algorithms that make high charge percentage much safer than uh, they do used to be. The key is the combination of charge speed, pack temperature, and how often you do it. Phones fought us to avoid 100% because their tiny batteries and chargers behave differently and because we constantly keep them plugged into unpredictable USB chargers. Cars are engineered systems. The battery pack, the thermal system, and the BMS are designed to work together. Manufacturers sometimes uh, intentionally allow or require full chargers for calibration or chemistry reasons. LFP packs in particular often ask you to charge to 100% for maximum user range and better state of charge accuracy. The myth busted in three clear statements. Charging to 100% is not always bad. It depends on the chemistry, temperature, and charge rate. Never charging to 100% can cause BMS calibration drift and cell imbalance that reduce usable capacity. 
Charging to 100% frequently at high temperature and high power is bad. How modern EVs protect the battery when you hit 100%? Automakers use several protective tricks. Charge tapering reduces current as the battery fills to the limit stress. The last 10 to 20% of charge is slow on purpose to avoid damage. Thermal management heats or cools the pack during charging to keep it safe. Preconditioning warms the cold pack so it accepts charge without plating lithium. And cell balancing and software recalibration use periodic full charges to restore accuracy and uh, equalize cells. That background balancing is why of occasional 100% charges. These systems are why a controlled car managed 100% charge is far different from yanking your phone to 100% on a hot day. When you should absolutely charge to 100%? For long trips when you need full range. When the car requests a full charge for a firmware update or calibration. After maintenance or cell replacement that could uh, alter cell voltages. When dealing with LFP batteries to reset state of charge accuracy and get full usable capacity. And when you should avoid 100% charging. Daily topping if you have lithium, nickel, high energy cells and it's hot outside. Leaving car at 100% in a hot garage for days. Using maximum DC fast charging to go from 20 to 100% frequently without thermal management. A practical safe charging routine that covers all chemistries is like this. Use daily charge limits from the manufacturers, but allow occasional full charges. Set your daily limit to 80 or 90 for regular use. Do one full 100% charge every two to six weeks or whenever the car recommends it. Precondition the battery before fast charging as well. You can let the car warm or cool the pack so it can accept charge safely. And don't leave the pack at 100% in high temperatures. If you must arrive at 100% for a trip, schedule the charge close to the departure. Use a slow charging overnight whenever possible for routine top-ups. Simple rules spread fast because they're easy to remember. The problem is battery world isn't simple. The always 80% mainstream ignores ke uh, chemistry differences, EMS design, and real-world behavior. It's like telling everyone to breathe only through their nose because someone once choked on a grape. Sometimes it's right, sometimes it's dangerous. Many brands publish guidance that looks nuanced because they have to support different chemistries and climates. Some explicitly tell owners to charge to 100% occasionally. Others warn about the combination of high state of charge and heat. The safest bet is to read your owner's manual and use the car's recommended charge profile while applying the common sense rules we cover. What the data and labs show in the simple terms? Research shows that calendar aging accelerates at high state of charge and high temperatures. Cycle aging gets worse with deeper cycles and higher charge rates. But LFP chemistry tolerates more cycles and likes occasional full charges for accurate state of charge readings. NFC and other high energy cells are more sensitive to high state of charge and temperature. That's the technical bias for the mixed advice you see. You don't need to be anxious about hitting 100% sometimes. The real mistake is letting fear turn into rigid rules that ignores how your car was designed to behave. A regular charge strategy that combines mid-range daily limits with occasional full charges and smart thermal management actually protects the battery more than slavishly staying under 80 forever. Quick checklist you can use tonight. Set your daily limit to 80 or 90 for everyday driving. Once every few weeks charge to 100% for calibration. Precondition before fast charging, avoid 100% and high temperatures together. Follow manufacturer's recommendation for LFP or NMC specifics. Battery care isn't moralizing or magic. It's smart habits plus understanding how your particular battery chemistry and car work together. Stop treating EVs like phones. Treat them like engineered systems that sometimes need a full top-up to stay honest, healthy, and useful.